Hello and welcome to Scam Artist TV. I'm your host, Paulie the Wise Guy. I just wanted to take a moment to do a quick video about Scam Artists and kind of let everyone who's not familiar with our brand and our mission to get an opportunity to understand what we're about. So basically, Scam Artist stands for superheroes, comic books, anime and manga. And our goal is to debate, discuss, introduce new um, things to people regarding that genre uh, and kind of cover the whole nerdy spectrum, so to speak. Um, we're really passionate about what we do. We have a Facebook group. Uh, the Facebook group is called Scam Artists Debate Group. Uh, we also have a page, the Scam Artists Facebook page, so make sure you uh, get the opportunity to go like those. Okay, so I just wanted to do a quick review on the Wonder Woman. A lot of people had um, negative things to say about this, and while I'm not necessarily fond of the selection, it's not because uh, I feel that Gal Gadot has um, poor acting chops or, you know, not enough credibility as an actress goes, and it's not because her physique doesn't meet the qualifications of um, Diane, you know. Uh, Wonder Woman is a very specific character, and I feel that the person playing Wonder Woman needs to exhibit a um, certain amount of attributes. Uh, physique is one of those things, but, you know, let's be honest. You know, Gal Gadot, she could gain weight and work out and do the things she needs to do in order to meet the weight and physique requirements for this character. Uh, she's been a bit of a badass in the, uh, for her brief stint in the Fast and Furious franchise, so we can't just write her off. Now, we haven't seen enough of her, but I'm, I'm, I actually prefer when we are introduced to you know, relatively unknown actors and actresses uh, to take on these roles. I mean, Tom Hiddleston, uh, Chris Hemsworth, for the most part, these characters were not known, so those roles kind of put them on the map. And um, so it shouldn't be to the chagrin of most of us that like, oh, you know, this person, we don't even know who this person is. So uh, I really couldn't think of another person uh, to play those two roles. Now, my issue with it is I was really hoping that Jamie Alexander, uh, who plays Sif on the Thor movies, would actually end up getting the role. She has the perfect look to fill it out and I really feel like she can pull off that warrior princess type of role so uh, the Amazon um, look she she really kind of embodies that plus I feel like she has the chops and could pull off Diane's uh, character pretty well so uh, I'm, I'm kind of disappointed about that and, and it's my understanding that she was actually interested in the role as well so there's that so um, moving on, the other thing I want to talk about is Spider-Man. So, the Spider-Man 2 trailer uh, for Amazing Spider-Man uh, was released this past week, and, you know, it has the internet all abuzz, and uh, a lot of people are concerned, though, because from what we knew, we knew that Electro was going to be the main villain. Um, we had heard some talk about, you know, Paul Giamatti as... Uh, Rhino potentially, but no one knew about, and this is a spoiler, if you haven't seen the trailer, you should stop this and go watch the trailer now, but no one knew about the involvement of the Goblin, Hobgoblin, or Green Goblin, whichever character is going to be. Uh, it appears that there's going to be Norman Osborn and Harry Osborn in this film, and now we have a, a Goblin character going to be in the movie. So they haven't really explained which Goblin it's going to be, but now we have three villains. So a lot of people are concerned because the last time we had a Spider-Man movie with three villains, that turned out pretty horribly, and uh, people are worried that, you know, this is heading in that same direction. Now, from the trailer, I don't get that, that feeling. I feel like they're really uh, paced it well, and it looks like it might be able to be pulled off correctly. But I want to kind of take this from a different approach. A lot of people are addressing it like, oh, you can't do too many villains in one film. But realistically, Spider-Man is a character who takes on multiple villains at once. That's almost kind of his thing. You know, he wakes up in the morning, you know, uh, stops a bank robbery on his way to work. And, you know, um, at lunchtime, he saves, you know, a few people and then 
uh, on his way home, he saves a few people and stops, you know, some crime spree. So Spider-Man's always, you know, balancing life and crime fighting in a way that other superheroes don't do it. You know, uh, Batman, for the most part, he takes on, like, one character and deals with that one character, whereas Spider-Man has been known to have to face multiple of his villains at the same time, hence the Sinister Six, and... Um, that's part of, part of his thing, and even though he the odds are against him, he usually comes out on top because um, Spider-Man's like his rogue gallery of villains, you know, individually. Uh, at times they may be stronger than he is, but uh, once Spider-Man figures him out, you know, it, it becomes a pretty easy match from that point on. So they really have to team up in order to actually pose a great threat to him. So. Um, the movie also hints at the fact that they're going to be doing a potentially a Sinister Six theme in the the third installment of the film, assuming that this one does well and they go go for it with it. But you know, we'll see. So uh, in the trailer, there was Doc, Dr. Octopus's arms, and then um, you know other devices in the background that belong to other Sinister Six members. So hopefully we, we actually get a Sinister Six film. I think that would actually be pretty awesome. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. And as Spider-Man is my favorite character, I'm a little bit, you know, excited. So anyway, um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was Paul Walker. But I really don't want to speak about his death, you know. Um, I really just want to kind of talk about what life his film career has left. And, you know, the legacy that he's kind of left behind, so to speak. So, um, two things, two bits of news. One was the Hours trailer. So the Hours trailer dropped uh, not too long after his passing. And uh, this actually looks like a really, really promising film. Um, basically, Paul Walker's character uh, is married and his wife goes into labor. And she has a complicated birth and she ends up passing away. So... He's left with this child who um, who basically took his wife from him and his from his point of view. And but it's the last uh, vestige of his marriage. And now uh, some natural disaster hits the city and the baby who can't survive without a breathing machine um, needs him to stay stick around. And everybody's basically abandoned the the building and he's trying to do everything within his power to keep his daughter or child alive. So um, it really looks like an interesting film, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. The other bit of news is the Fast and Furious franchise, and where do they go from here? Do they keep the, the footage in? Uh, do they not keep the footage in? Do they try to rewrite the movie for uh, FF7? Or do they, you know, scrap the entire uh thing. So um, the studios released some information saying that they're planning on keeping the footage in and the uh, primary writer is going to find a way to incorporate uh, Paul Walker's death tastefully into the film. So I think that is the best way to go. I actually, in the group, uh, we had a discussion about this and I said that um, it's very unfortunate that he passed away. But in relation to this story, Excuse me. In relation to this story, his death in the film, so his character Brian in the film, um, actually allows them to have a film where the stakes have been raised raised considerably. So I think this is a really strong opportunity for them to make probably the best film they've made thus far. So uh, and probably more heartfelt film. So. Uh, there's all, also talk about them doing an eighth installment, which I'm not so excited about. I was actually thinking, like, all right, you do number seven and you kind of go off with a bang. Uh, not that the franchise has been amazing, but it's been fun. So um, I've enjoyed that. But eight films uh, of a, you know, okay franchise versus seven films of a fun franchise, you know. So that's just my thoughts on it. So... Uh, I'll leave it with that. Um, I want to talk about something that's very personal to me now. Uh, this past Friday was my birthday, and my beautiful girlfriend 
and my wonderful friends, they all surprised me with a birthday party. Uh, we met up at uh, one of my favorite restaurants, La Fogata in Kenosha, and, you know, I was n- unaware, completely unaware that I was going to have a surprise party. So this is the first time it's ever happened in my life, so I was really excited about that. Uh, from that, my friends who know the geek in me um, purchased some gifts for me. There's Super Saiyan Goku 3. I don't know who this guy is. Super Saiyan uh, 3 Vegeta. And Super Saiyan 3. I'm sorry. Super Saiyan uh, Trunks and Super Saiyan Broly. So uh, it was really cool uh, and thought, thoughtful of them to get me those. I also received two oldies but goodies uh some x-men books and i'm very, i'm looking forward to reading those so um for anyone who knows me this is uh it's pretty hard to surprise me i usually figure things out before the surprise occurs so the fact that they, they pulled it off was uh pretty amazing for me so um anyway that's all i have for this week uh, you'll be seeing more videos from us. Also be looking out for the new video, uh, tutorial, art tutorial by one of our group members, Philippe Barrows. Philippe is one of the Scam Artist team members and he'll be, uh, doing regular tutorial videos to show you how to draw and help people out. So, um, trust me, uh, Philippe is amazing. He did the art for our cover photo for the group and it is also serving as the art for our YouTube channel. So, uh, if you have any questions or if you want to contact Philippe, I'll leave his contact information below and just be on the lookout for his videos. He'll be doing them bi-weekly um, starting, you know, this week. All right. Well, anyway, Scam Martyrs, you guys have a great weekend, great day. Uh, enjoy. I'm out. Peace. Yo!